Hello and welcome back to another episode of Design Direction. Just like to say, first of all, thank you to everyone that has subscribed to my channel. Um, over 300 subscribers already, which is great. Uh, I'm really happy that you guys are enjoying the content that I'm putting out. And I just wanted to kind of give you a quick update to what I've been up to. So since kind of putting myself out to you guys uh, across YouTube and um, Webflow, the Webflow community, um, I've just been so, so busy since then. A lot of people have reached out, which is great. So again, thanks so much for that. Um, and I thought I hadn't done a tutorial in a little while. And um, there was there was something that a lot of you guys were asking about. And it's one that I can quickly do in between um, this really busy period for me. So I thought I would pick up on the um, topic of code pen. And I know a lot of you guys um, have asked me, how to get things from CodePen. So what I'm going to do is just run you through some of the things that I look out for and basically how you can start to implement some CodePen um, kind of mini projects inside of your Webflow project. Now obviously you do have to have a level of understanding with JS, CSS and HTML um, and, and that will kind of really determine how you can build um, these out. Um, some of them are really simple though to be honest so it's just a case of looking at the right things and connecting that up inside a Webflow to be able to get these to work and that's pretty much it so the first few things that I look at when it goes to coping obviously there's lots on there so you can find some really really good stuff and um, again mixed between you know some being really simple to set up and some being bit of a nightmare to set up and it's kind of a trial and error basis you know give it a go if you can't get it working maybe no stress try and find something else that's similar that might be easier because um, people code things up differently and some are easier options than others so I found this really nice um, I found this really nice um, tween max interaction now I'm just gonna load it up and it should come in yeah this really nice uh, staggered um, Tween Max reveal animation. And I, I found this and I was like, yeah, this is really nice. Um, so going into the, the, the kind of setup of um, CodePen, there's three different panels. We have HTML, CSS, and JS. And you know, the kind of standard thing would be look at the HTML. So I'm looking at the HTML and see this is the class here. So it's obvious to me that inside of the CSS, I need to be finding. Um, the CSS for this. So as I can see, you've got Lorium, Span, Span, you've got Lorium, Span, and you've got Lorium as well. So that part of that CSS, I know that I would want to copy over to um, Webflow, and then this class can be wrapped on any element inside of my Webflow project, and that's basically going to connect them. So we've got that first part, we're okay, right, so we need to take that over in. Then we go into the JS, and this all looks pretty pretty good, and there's you know things that you might want to look out for. So as you can see, um, you know, you've got delay here, you've got some repeats, you've got different kind of numbers you could play around with these a little bit but again play at your own risk because you could mess things up but if not you know just keep it as it is um, and then as you go through obviously we've got the target for that class which we've got in there which is great um, and then there's one other important bit here now each of these have a cog icon so when I click on this cog icon, it gives me a pop-up, which is basically telling me the hosted files that are linked to this pen. So at the moment, we have jQuery Mini, which we already have inside of Webflow, so we won't actually need to do that. And that, again, this is already pre-hosted. And then we have another one, which is Tween Max. Now, that's the one that we're going to need to bring over to the Webflow project because Webflow doesn't have it. Again, this is hosted on a server. And there may be instances where you might have to bring, um, you might have to host your own files to be able to implement some of these. But most of the time, they're already pre hosted, which is great. So then you can just copy them straight over. Um, and again, with the CSS, there's one here. The only thing that I've seen differently here is sometimes people use different um, CSS kind of standards. So you have your less, um, you have your SAS. Um, and your SCSS um, as well, which sometimes you have to convert 
them over into CSS and you can do that by going online and doing like a, a less to CSS converter. Again, there may be some issues around that and how that, that kind of relays that CSS back into um, its form because it might not work and I've had instances where I've tried converting it over and it hasn't worked. So as a good rule, try and find ones that have got CSS and JS and that will help you um, through some of the headaches that you might come across with doing these. So let's now get into how we would dismantle this inside of the project. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to copy this CSS, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to go into our project. Now what I've already done is I've put the title in and you would have guessed it, it's called Lorium. So it's the same class as what we see inside of the CSS as well as all of the JS and the HTML. So we're going to go to this panel. You could put it as an embed, but I'm just going to do it in here. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to style, open, style, close. And then we've got our CSS now. We can act, we're can we actually going to style most of this inside a web flow. So we can get rid of some of these. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of this. We can get rid of this, this, and this. So we can get rid of these, which is great. We can save that now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to oh I'm going to go to um, this one that I'd already set up I'm just going to copy over this file and I'll explain what I'm doing now so I'm just going to copy this we'll just go here we're going to put this in the in the bottom part of the site I always put so again, sometimes the position of this can be really important, where that file sits, where the script sits. Um, normally you put it uh, at the end of the body tag, because um, that's where your um, jQuery file will be sitting. And sometimes the jQuery file needs to be sitting above all of that to then be able to activate the JS as well. So that is really important. The positioning can determine how this works as well. Um, so I saved that. So basically, what I actually did, um, what I actually did was, I copied the link from this file, and I just referenced that inside of um, inside of my Webflow project. And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this JS. I'm going to open my panel again. I'm going to go, and I'm going to make sure I'm below this file. So that's the that's the TweenMax file that we've called in from that pre-hosted file, and then we're going to go script. Oh, and then we're going to close it. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to drop this in, and again we're just going to make sure that that is the same, that is the same class, and this would be the same case shoes if you if you changed your one to I don't know. We went here and called this. If I rename this and call this hello, so what you'd have to do, so we can go through this process again. So hopefully this will stick with you. We just need to go in here and change this so it's the same. Hello is the class that I'm targeting. Great. Great. And then we need to make sure you might be scouring through the JS to find some might have multiple class uh, limiters where you have to put them in but here it's just here so we just need to change this one to hello and we save that we go to publish we open a new screen and there you go so we've implement implemented that really nice tween max intro animation and there you go. So that's how we get things from Copen inside of your Webflow projects. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you learned some things. And don't forget, guys, if you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And I will see you on the next tutorial.